So I just walked out of a great delivery with a customer and they're on their delivery flight right now. And we're down here in Knoxville, Tennessee and some of the questions that I get a lot and spend a lot of time with customers on are, hey, now my airplane's back in the hangar, it's time to update the databases and I wanna use the Flightstream 510 or database concierge to transfer the databases from Garmin Pilot to the airplane so that my airplane is current and legal to fly. So this video is here. We're gonna walk through in detail, step by step by step, on how to sync up your, your iPad or your phone to your airplane and transfer the databases from your Garmin Pilot account to the airplane itself. So anyway, enjoy this video. It's a little bit longer, but I wanna make sure you see it in full detail. And as always, I always appreciate a like and a subscribe. Ring the notification bell if you so desire. It helps make what we do here on the channel a lot more fun. Leave comments, all that. But enough of that. Let's get to updating your airplane with the Flightstream 510. So we're in a brand new SR22 Turbo, and this is the first time we're actually syncing Garmin Pilot and the Flightstream Concierge to um, to the airplane and all. And we're gonna actually, we've got some new databases that are available to download and send to the MFD here. And the first thing we need to do, we're running Garmin Pilot on, the, on our phone. We have to do a couple things. We have to one, make sure that the, the phone is paired via Bluetooth to the uh, Flightstream 510, which it's not. We don't have a, a phone connected yet. So the first thing we're gonna do with Bluetooth is go into our phone settings and connect, uh, go to settings, and then we're gonna to go to Bluetooth. And at the very bottom there, it usually takes, you know, maybe up to 30 seconds for it to show up. And there's our flight stream device. We're gonna pair it there. There's our number, and we've got a verifying pairing here. We can go ahead and hit enter to accept that. Hit it on the phone. And now we can see that we're successfully connected to the MFD via Bluetooth. That's step one. So step two now is to go to our uh, Garmin Pilot. So we're gonna exit out of our Bluetooth settings. We're gonna go to Garmin Pilot. There we go. And we can go to our, um, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and go to hit continue continue again. This is the first time when we connect to the flight stream and the Garmin Pilot, there's a there's a few different... Um, enable. Yep, we'll go ahead and enable that, log some data. There you go, and hit uh, cancel. Awesome, so the next thing we're gonna do is go to our more tab, and we're gonna go down to connects. We've already set up a fly Garmin profile where we've got our database concierge uh, enabled through flygarmin.com and we entered our system ID and enabled everything. So let's scroll down to our database concierge. There we go. So it says transfer to Wi-Fi network. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to the more tab and we can go to, uh, let's see, is there downloads right here? Okay. Good. So those are our downloads. Just to okay. verify, let's go ahead and go ahead and hit back. And we can start to see that we have some uh, some uh, databases here. So we've synced everything. There's our airplane. It's set up in flygarmin.com. We can go to database concierge download. So go ahead and click that. Awesome. And these are We've linked our Jepson data account to our Fly Garmin account, and we've actually we can see through here that we've got a we've got a handful of um, uh, updates. So the one that we're actually going to do, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But one thing that we can see is uh, we have our Jepson chart view. We've got to download that. So why don't we go ahead and hit, click download? Awesome. And then we have uh, our terrain. See that? Notice the little lock button. This is incredibly important that our terrain database uh, does not get updated via the Flightstream 510. 
it is way too big of a file for this system to handle and it can take up to a couple hours you could run your battery down and i've seen a lot of problems occur when you transfer terrain so there's actually a button that will enable this lock feature where it says disable auto downloads or transfer of the device of the of the of the ter terrain database and we definitely want that so let's just go back and click back real quick so in order to find the menu that you want to make sure that we exclude everything correctly, let's go to connect. So our connect uh, dashboard here will either pop up with something that says, hey, we're connected to the airplane. We can hit back, uh, in which we're already on that screen, and then we'll hit database concierge. Now on this page, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll start to see the exclusion bars. We want to make sure that we uh, exclude, we enable the exclusion of IFR, VFR charts and uh, the terrain databases. Those are databases are way too big for us to transfer via the flight stream. The Jepson charts, the chart view is okay to do. It takes a little time, maybe uh, 20, 15 to 20 minutes for those to transfer. Um, it really helps to have a power cart, but uh, we'll leave that enabled for now. So we're at a point where we're ready to go back to the screen here. Uh, our, on our MFD and we'll go to our database page. So we're gonna go and click down to our databases. There you go. And we have some databases of, that, uh, uh, that are ready. Now, the other thing that we have to do is change our preferred device. So rather than our iPad, we wanna change to our phone. So all we do is hit the, the, the center cursor knob. There you go. And we can come down to the phone and check that out, perfect. So that's our preferred device. Now we'll go to our manage downloads. There we go. And we've got everything all set. So now from our downloads uh, page uh, for con database concierge, we have a few different things. Our MFD now recognizes that we have some new things on our on our uh, device. So what I can do, this is the default page, uh, and we can see our active database and our standby database. Everything is currently active, but we have a new cycle that's about ready to hit, and I can click down to our device, and that's actually gonna switch to, oh, we've got the iPhone. And we appropriately right now have our 2011 that's our next nav cycle that comes of, becomes effective on October the 8th and what we're going to do is take it from the phone our device and edit put it into the standby database then on October 8th when it ex when the active one expires this one's going to then kick over to the active so we're essentially preloading it here so that on the 8th we're ready to roll and we're, we're not illegal the other thing that we could tell that the system has identified that there is an active database on the phone. So through Bluetooth, this little, this little database or this compact disc, or we'll call them pancakes, stack of pancakes shows up. That means that that's your trigger that the system has read your Garmin Pilot app and saw that there's available databases to transfer. So this is good. We're now at a point where we're ready to transfer. So go ahead and hit the device button. And when we come over here, we can see there's two. There's, these are the device, these are the databases that are ready to transfer, symbolizing the blue arrow. So now we can hit the update button and we're gonna to start to see connect to Flightstream 510 via Wi-Fi. Our Wi-Fi is finally enabled. Uh, it turns on when we're ready to connect. So what we need to do is go to our phone and our settings We'll go to our Wi-Fi, and here's our flight stream, and we're going to connect. Now, there's a password that we need, so what we have to do is actually go to the AUGS page again, and then we need to go to our Connect uh, uh, setup page, and our password to our Wi-Fi is right here. Read that off there. Yeah. So we have uh, we're going to enter five nine Quebec. Zero zero one one two eight. There 
go. So what we're doing is we're now connecting right here. And now uh, we have a message saying that the Wi-Fi is not connected, but we're actually, we're we actually now, we are connected now. So go ahead and just, let's hit view just so we can see what that says. Transfer complete. So we're connected now and we've already quickly, we just, because the nav database was such a small file, it's already, uh, it takes just a second here, but now we're transferring our JEP chart view and that's a bigger file. So it's gonna take a little bit, another minute remaining. This is about 500 megabytes, so a half of a gigabyte here. And uh, we just have to sit here and wait for it to uh, transfer. So we're here, it goes uh, relatively quick, you know, with the charts, but um, so we're at, a, we're, at a good, we're at a good place here. This will happen just automatically. It may not feel like something's working uh, right away, but it will come over here and then all of a sudden, boom, it starts, it starts transferring. So you'll start to see it. So in our, from our device, here's our active, uh, active devices here, which looks great. Another 20 seconds remaining. Awesome. So another nine seconds, we'll see what happens. No update, or there's everything, the database transfers are complete. Everything is complete here. Awesome. The next thing that happens is that the database is going to be verified. So making sure that we have the proper licenses and all that, it's verifying and writing it to the to the to the actual hardware here. So there is a um, a, a sync that's uh, that's happening here. So it's important. A lot of people say transfer complete and then they stop, but now we actually have to sync the database. So we've already done the navigation and the charts take a few minutes. This is very, very important. In order to keep the batteries on, let this sync, don't be in a rush, and don't stop until you see transfer complete and then think you're done. You have to wait for the syncing. Uh, this is actual kind of unpacking the file and writing it into the database. Um, so we've transferred it. Now we're like, this is unpacking the file and writing it to the to the MFD. So this is the one where we actually need to, you know, the whole process takes about 15 minutes. The syncing is the thing that takes a little bit longer. So we're gonna pause right here. We're gonna check back in when we have a few seconds left and see what happens next. All right, so our sync has been completed. Um, it's funny because this will say that there's about eight minutes left and then uh, all of a sudden it just goes, boop, it's done. So. It's not the most accurate uh, thing on the planet, um, the countdown timer, so you have to pay very close attention. But you can tell everything is done here. We've got everything is taken off of the phone, moved to the standby database. And if we look at, if we click the standby active database uh, selection here, we've got, uh, we've got everything. So we've come over and we're now waiting for uh, October 8th to come about, and then we're gonna transfer that to when this one expires. So we're gonna be good there. That's our next database, 2011. It's gonna super, supersede 2010. And then right now we can tell that um, uh, 2019 is, uh, is available. And uh, there's a if we were to restart the avionics right now, um, this would sync everything and essentially transfer. So let's go ahead and hit restart. We'll move over, use the FMS knob to the restart. There you go. So our avionics have restarted and let's go down to our databases and we're able to see what's going on. So we can see that we have um, our standby databases. We've got 2011 to 2010 and our charts right now have gone from 2019 to 2020, so that's good. Those are expiring now on the 22nd of October. So we're actually looking really good here. We've got everything ready. We're ready for the 8th. If we're in the middle of an IFR flight, that's gonna transfer essentially, and um, we're all good. So exciting. The next update that we'll really need to do is on the 22nd of October. So this is just a quick video. Well, it's not really quick, but just a hopefully a thorough in-depth video on how to connect your device 
to your uh, MFD and transfer the databases um, uh, through database concierge through the Flightstream 510.